Uh, Evan Pagan is one of the biggest uh, life changers for me, mentorship wise. Um, he might uh, be speaking at one of our events coming up. I'm trying to negotiate that. One of his concepts is that if you think about how do I make it inevitable that we raise all the capital we need? How do we make it inevitable that we have the best deal flow in the whole industry? For example, um, if you're trying to get deal flow in the self storage industry, and maybe there's seven little niche websites, some that look like from the 1990s that like cover storage assets only nationally, and they try to be the broker that specializes in storage and works with people nationally. There's not many people that try to do that. But if there's only seven of them, and three seem to be the most active, and you approach those three and try to invest some of your money to help them either modernize their brokerage or support them, and now you own five or 10% of that brokerage business, and you get a first look or get to cherry pick their real estate deals and storage, or you tell them, hey, look, what fee do you usually get? And they say, oh, you know, 2% or 3%, and you say, okay, give us an hour and a half before you publish any deal or send it to anyone else, and if we take the deal in return for showing us the deal first, then we will pay you 4.25% or we'll pay you time and a half the normal fee you get, but we want a 90 minute look at it before you put it out to your list. And if we say yes, then we have to go hard on the deal within X number of days, or we have to put a real offer down within X number of days. And if we jerk you around and you don't like us, then you can just change your mind and we do away with the agreement. But locking in the deal flow or locking in a flow of investors, in some states, lawyers and CPAs can refer investors to you and get paid a commission legally, even though they're not broker dealer licensed. So doing something where, like we had someone who ran a hedge fund in Chicago, and they said, hey, uh, I'm looking to raise more capital. And I said, oh, great, well, how have you raised capital to date? And they said, oh, for my CPA. And he happened to be of uh, Indian descent. And, and I have a lot of friends who are uh, from India originally, by chance, so I know that they have communities within different cities quite often. And uh, so I said, oh, well, by chance, is your CPA Indian descent? And he said, yeah, he is, by chance. And I said, oh, okay, well, uh, the investors you got from your CPA, are they also Indian? He's like, oh, yeah, they are. So I said, okay, well, I can recognize someone's last name as being Indian many times. So if you had somebody, again, could be from the Philippines or on your team, go and download the state of Illinois uh, list of publicly uh, certified public accountants and look for Indian last names and highlight all of those. And if someone look up all their websites, contact details, et cetera, then you could work that list of just CPAs in your state. And there's probably you know, over 100 of them that are of Indian descent and have it so they're paid an above board disclosed commi uh, commission, referral commission, and now you can, you can go deep and systematic on what's already working for you. And those people have an affinity because you're local to them, you have things in common, you might be the same religion, might go to the same you know, festivals, um, you know, et cetera. So when I talk about being systematic, it's about that. And you know, what it, maybe it doesn't make it inevitable to, by doing that, but maybe if you went to every CPA conference association event in the state of Illinois, because you had success with one CPA, and you went deep on Indian CPAs, and you went deep on Indian community events, that sounds like something that's close to inevitable, that you would raise a lot more capital than you are right now. So we often try to zoom in on like what has momentum and take that and, and try to make it more exponential if you can, or acquire something to make it exponential. So Eben Pagan taught me how to do that, completely changed our business. Our third year in business, we did seven figures in revenue and we started with no money in the bank account. I had a $1,000 a month rent in Harvard Square in a basement 300 square foot studio apartment. It was like literally underground with a little tiny window. And um, the first month we were in business, we had $600 in the bank account, not enough money to pay rent the first month when I started Family Office Club. So, uh, you know, you don't need tons of resources to do this stuff. But uh, Rockefeller is the one that made this strategy so famous. 